Hi guys, welcome to another lecture from my series on probability and statistics. Today we will talk about, as you see on the screen, a special distribution called the hypergeometric distribution. What I want to focus on is that this essentially is a special case of binomial. How so? Kaise ye binomial se related hai? Let's understand that. Today's video, I'm using this book, Applied Statistics for Economists, one of my favorites. Consider again, population capital M elements of which M1 have characteristic A labeled success and M2 equals to M minus M1 have characteristic B labeled failure. Now, suppose that from this population, we select a sample of capital N elements without replacement. What is the probability that of, of, of observing exactly x successes in the sample. So, chale dekhte hai is situation mein ye probability niklegi kaise. Humne kis tarikhe se apna experiment liya hai? We have a population say capital M of which M1 have characteristic A labeled as success. M2 which is M minus M1 have characteristic B called failure. If you observe here, here also you have that binomial phenomena. What's happening is that you have only two results, either success or failure. This could be applied anywhere like, you know, defective, non-defective. A test has been taken, either it is positive or negative. It could be a particular case of, say, black ball, others non-black ball. So, whenever you are dividing the entire data as success, failure. So, this also is associated to, so hypergeometric also is associated to this kind of situation. Now, suppose that from this population, we select a number of capital N elements without replacement. Now, without replacement is something which is very important out here because that's what distinguishes this scenario from the scenario of binomial because binomial, remember, is with replacement always, right? What is the probability of observing exactly X successes in the sample? So what are we doing here is we are taking out a sample of capital N from the entire population capital M. Out of which we know that certain numbers are successes, certain numbers are failures and we want X successes. So how to get there? So the total of M population is divided into successes and failures. How many successes we have? We have M1 successes and we have M2 that is equal to M minus M1 failures, right? Now, so what is the total number of samples that you can take out of size N? If the population is capital N, then I can find out, I can take out M choose N number of samples, okay, of all of size N, right? Out of which I want X successes. So out of N, we want X successes. So therefore, automatically, since the total that I'm taking out is capital N, and if I'm only interested in X successes, then the remaining will definitely be failures. 
Now, in how many ways can I get these X successes? Well, in, when I know that there are M1 total successes, then M1 CX ways are there to get successes, X successes. Similarly, in how many ways can I get failures, N minus X failures? Well, since I know that there are in total M minus M1 failures, so M minus M1 C, N minus X failures, when there are X successes. So therefore, the required probability That is the probability that we get X successes in the sample of size N is equal to favorable cases upon total. Total cases are we are selecting capital N out of capital M. Favorable cases are out of these I need X successes. So M1 C X. And simultaneously, what will happen is that I will get N minus X failure. So out of what? Out of M minus M1 or M2, whatever you want to write it as. Once this working is clear with you guys, then you can think about how to apply it on any given question. So here I have a question for you guys. During a particular period at a university's information technology office received 20 service orders for problems with printer. Printers of which 8 were laser printers, 12 inkjet models. A sample of size, a sample of size 5 of these service orders is to be selected for inclusion in a customer satisfaction survey. Suppose five are selected in a completely random fashion so that any particular subset of size five has the same chance of being selected as, as does any other subset. What then is the probability that exactly X, where X could be zero, one, two, three, four, five of the selected service orders were for inject printers. See, there are eight laser printers and 12 inject. Now, out of 20, out of these 20, five are to be selected. What is the probability that exactly X of the selected service orders were for inject printers? So basically, out of these five, what is the probability? Now, I have given you in the question that X could be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because maybe none of the injects are selected, so X is 0. Maybe one of them is selected, so X is 1. Maybe two of them selected, X is 2, so on and so forth. So say, let's try to find out what is the probability that X is equal to 2. Which would mean that what is happening here, the total probability is that we are selecting out of the 20 total printers, we are selecting 5. And the 20 has been divided clearly into laser and inkjet. Okay. X, the random variable, is the number of injects selected. Now, we already know that there are 8 lasers and 12 injects. So, when I say X equals to 2, that means, what is the probability that 2 injects are selected? So, if 2 injects are selected, that means 12 C2 ways I can select them. Automatically, 3 would be laser because in total 5 have been selected, right? So similarly, so this would be give you certain probability. Similarly, if x is equal to 3, then that would imply again 20 C5, 20 C5. But this would mean that out of the 12 injects, 3 
have been any three have been selected and simultaneously of course two have to be the laser one so on and so forth so if we want to generalize this we can probability x is equal to x where x the random variable stands for the number of injects selected out of the sample so 20 c5 your denominator is fixed why because that's the sample we are taking out of the 20 we are taking any 5 now out of which we know that we want x number of injects so 12 c x and automatically 20 minus 12 which is 8 c 5 minus x where x can take the value 0 1 2 3 4 5 at the maximum it can go to 5 now if you want to compare it to what we just learnt the general case of uh, hypergeometric the notations that i use there this is your capital m this is your capital n in that sense and x is what you are keeping for the random variable and you know that m1 if we take m1 as injects injects are 12 and automatically m2 is 20 minus 12 which is the laser laser ones are the is the failure because my random variable is based on injects number of injects so 8 they are basically uh, the laser ones and automatically 5 minus x have to be selected out of these and that's what is your hypergeometric now think about it in this scenario had it been given to you that whatever you are choosing the sample whatever you are doing here is with replacement had it been with the replacement what would have been your probability of x equal to say two injects selected if it would have been a with replacement case then the probabilities would have been probability of laser would have been 8 upon 20 and probability of inject would have been 12 upon 20. In case of binomial then probability x equal to 2 would have been you are selecting 5. Out of the 5 any 2 are injects automatically the remaining 3 would become laser. The probability associated to injects is 12 upon 20 so square of that 2 are uh, injects and 8 upon 20 cube of that because 3 are injects and so on and so forth if it would have been a with replacement case. So the difference between hypergeometric and uh, binomial is a similar kind of scenario except for except for the th fact that in binomial it's a with replacement case and you can think of hypergeometric as binomial with without replacement. In the next lecture I'll talk about the mean and variance of this random variable. Thank you very much for today.